It's been three months since Hamas launched a horrific terror attack on Israeli civilians, triggering off an Israeli retaliation. Now, the war in Gaza still continues and it's fast spreading across the region. Saudi Arabia just issued a very strong statement calling for a two nation solution and for a halt to the war in Gaza. Joining us now is Ambassador Talmiz Ahmed, India's former envoy to the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. Ambassador Ahmed, welcome to the News 9 Plus show. Ambassador Ahmed, I want to start by asking you, Saudi Arabia said no diplomatic ties with Israel unless it recognizes an independent Palestine and it's called for a halt to the Gaza war. What are your comments on this statement? There is a degree of public posturing involved here on the Israeli side. This is Israel's stated position. Uh, and it has been their position over the last several decades. This has also been the Saudi stated position, at least over the last two decades, when Saudi Arabia came up with the Arab Peace Initiative. That there ha everyone knows that if there is to be a settlement of the Palestine issue, it has to be based on Palestinians being given a state of their own, where they can live with sovereignty and dignity and commercial viability. This is not acceptable to Israel because of the messianic view of some of its extreme right wing who, are, who believe that God has given the Holy Land for the exclusive use of the Jewish people. Therefore, this land cannot be shared by Jews with non-Jews. The non-Jews should either be exterminated or enslaved or exiled. This is the messianic view. As of now, Netanyahu has affiliated himself with the extreme right wing uh, of uh, Israel's political spectrum and obviously he is parroting the views of the right wing. There is a small opinion emerging in sections of Israeli opinion uh, 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 of Israeli political order, which says that, look, we have to settle something with the Palestinians. What those details are, we don't know. But it, it seems to be we have a long way to go. What the Americans have done in this scenario is never, never, never seriously insisted on the Israelis that they should come up with solutions that are real and take into account the realities of the political order. That has never happened because just as much as the Americans viscerally despise the Iranians, they also at the same time provide total support to the most extreme postures that the Israeli leaders may come up with from time to time. So I would blame the Americans as the root cause of the problem. As far as the Israelis are concerned, they keep on stating what they believe in and the Americans seem to follow suit. And therefore, you find that the problem doesn't ever have an ending, doesn't have a resolution. They wanted to have relations with the Arabs without addressing Palestine. I think the Gaza war has pushed that back further for the time being. What happens to the India, Middle East, Europe economic corridor that's held up because of the Gaza war and this standoff between Saudi Arabia and Israel. Now, IMEC was introduced, was announced at the uh, G20 summit last October. I want to make it very clear to you, this corridor is a mirage. It has no basis in reality. It was an American initiative at the time of the G20 they in, and they got certain countries to support it. But if you look at and at that time, it was projected as a great diplomatic victory. What does it actually mean? It actually is an attempt by the Americans to integrate India with certain countries of the Gulf with Israel. And that's not going to happen. It, it was not going to happen earlier. Does it have any economic viability? Certainly not. India is already extremely well connected with West Asia, particularly the Arabian Peninsula. We have trade, they are our number one trade partner and with the countries of the GCC, we are exporting huge quantities of goods 
they are our number one export destination and we are also getting huge quantities of energy and other goods. We have a solid connectivity already. Where the Arabian Peninsula is concerned for the last 20 years, they have been looking at a railway project that would link the countries of the peninsula. Where does Israel fit into any of this? When it comes to exports of the region as of India, we all are using the Red Sea. Why do I need to tie myself up with Haifa? I already, so there is a very robust and substantial connectivity both by air and by ship and now in terms of uh, uh, the virtual connectivity through technology. It's already in place, worth billions of dollars. The region doesn't need this wretched corridor. It has no basis in reality. It is completely worthless, both in terms of geopolitics and economics. How successful do you think the United States will be in resolving this standoff between Israel and Saudi Arabia, given the fact that the US is heading into a re-election this year? Whether there was an election or not, I do not recall in the last 30 years, the Americans have taken any initiative or pursued any plan or project that the Israeli government doesn't want, the Israeli government of the day doesn't want. So it is not the United States that determines its approach to the Palestine issue. It is Israel that determines its approach to the Palestine issue and the Americans follow suit. It is a mantra which we are now tiredly repeating, oh, the Americans are the only ones to influence Israel. Theoretically, yes. In practical terms, there is no evidence that the, ever, that the Americans have ever exercised this capacity that we believe they have. Streaming on News 9 Plus. News is now content. Subscribe and get free vouchers.